What is going on? It's the 1st of June, and let's talk about going back in time. I'm going to get back to my original way of doing things, more instructive. I'm getting ready to relaunch B-School for Hustlers. I got a lot of people who want to get part of that. I'll be talking about more of that. So what we're going to do, this video um, is going to be an update on the car business. Now, I made $5,500. Uh, there is a, it's on the Instagram. I'll probably put a screenshot in the community page off of a $118,000 spend plus $6,500 in repairs, which was kind of bananas. And I'm getting a lot of questions about this, like insurance. So the first question, insurance. In the state of Georgia or any state that you buy a car, you must have minimum liability to drive that car off the dealer's lot or to move that car on public highways. So my insurance is $50 per car because I have liability. Now, when the car goes to Hire Car or Toro, there's a new platform called Avail. I don't know about that. Um, it goes on that platform, then they have insurance to protect the car as long as it's under a rental contract. One of the things I want to mess around with, and I had a very good conversation with someone who broke it down to me, that when you go out and get your own commercial insurance, you need to have a lot of vehicles. Let's say you went out and got your own commercial insurance and you had five vehicles, and two of those vehicles were totaled. That's 20% of your fleet, right? More than likely, they would not renew your policy. But let's say you have a fleet of 60 vehicles and you have five uh, claims. That is a small percentage. So essentially what you want to do, because all of them, Turo, Hire Car, have an option. Like Turo has a commercial plan where you, if you have your own insurance, you can list it on and get 92% of the rental. And once I get my fleet to 20, 30 cars, I'm going to go out and get a commercial policy because as I have that many cars, I'm not going to have to worry about claims because I'll have more and more cars. So I'm not going to have to worry about my commercial policy being canceled or not renewed. Or in a worst case scenario, what I would have to do is like, let's say I had commercial insurance and they canceled the policy or they, they refused to renew it. Then I would have to relist all of the cars on hire car under that premium option to get insurance from hire car. So there's kind of like, you know, I, I'm not like fully weirded out about going out and getting commercial insurance, but I only have eight cars. And by the end of this month, I'm probably going to have 14, 16 cars. I've, I've had one moist hater talk about, why does the number keep changing? I've shown you the receipts. $150,000 was in my personal checking account. Now, I am probably going to put $250,000 in this car rental business. So I'm going to, because let's see, uh, 50,000, yeah, I'm probably going to put $250,000 in this rental business, and I got to figure out what direction that I want to go. I may buy a car today. I might be buy, I might buy two cars today. I got to find a place to put the GPS in trackers because, you know, I go ahead and buy the car today, and then I got to wait two weeks to put the tracker in. I've lost five maybe $600 just waiting for that, you know, so that's something I'm not going to do. Um, I feel that the trackers, you know, I'll, I'll just put them in. I got to find someone 
that can install them when I need them installed and not be waiting two or three weeks to have them installed. So we will be doing that. But essentially, my plan is to rent the cards first to generate cash flow in each month to reinvest the profits or the revenue, because it's not profits, to reinvest back in the business and buy more cards. And once I get to about 60, 70 cars, that's gonna be about 100K a month in revenue. The way that I've, because I worked up the numbers three different ways, because right now I'm conflicted. Should I put cheap cars on there? Because here's something that is, you know, and this comes from testing, this comes from being in the marketplace. Um, the Range Rover, the Land Rovers, I had someone rent the Range Rover for a month. I had the guy who rented the Porsche on hire car. He's had it going on three weeks. And the girl who has the other Range Rover has renewed three times. And the BMW went out, came back. I had the BMW for 12 hours and it went back out again. And I have not seen it. So the reason that I was gonna sell these cars were they weren't working on hire car. Uh, the Land Rover went out once on hire car. The BMW went out two times on, not hire car, Turo. And I was just, they were just sitting. They were just sitting. And with them sitting, like I could wash them, but because they're sitting, they would get dirty because they were in my yard and I have a lot of trees and stuff. So I'm reconsidering selling them because I can get a higher rental price for those vehicles. And this is where I'm at. Should I go out and get cheaper vehicles or should I get more expensive vehicles that I can rent out at a higher price? And also, I've had a conversation with Hire Car. I may be able to be, because Hire Car goes from $30 a day to 70, 70 is the max, right? I might be able to bump that up to 100 bucks per, 100 bucks for the BMW, 100 bucks for the Land Rovers, 100 bucks. And if those cars run out 30 days, that's $3,000 per car. Gross revenue minus hire cars cut. Because let's say I went ahead and got hire car to allow me to do $100 per car. And then I went ahead and got my own insurance and my commercial insurance, believe it or not, is not that much more than traditional insurance per car. So um, if I could do $100 per car, that would be $2,500 per month. Uh, a lot of you out there with rental properties are not getting that kind of money for the investment. And let's talk about this because one of my big pauses, because you know I've talked about getting into real estate and my big pause was it takes so much money to get in real estate. And if you're borrowing that money from the bank or you're leveraging, but I, I know there's a guy that I did a, an expose on Savage Finance. He has 11 rentals and these 11 rentals cash flow at 2,500 per month. That's what he gets to put in his pocket. I had one rental car that didn't, you know, that cost me less than what he put down on the down payment for one of his rental properties. This car cost me less than that, and this car cash flowed at $1,600 per month. So, one of the big pauses with real estate is, and this is why a lot of people in real estate are moving to Airbnb, is because you, you can put a long-term renter in there and get... $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 a month, or you can put it on Airbnb and three exit. So let's say you had a property that you could get $3,000 a month. You put it on Airbnb, you could probably get $9,000 a month, which is a little bit better. But a property that you could get $3,000 a month is going to cost you $450,000 for one property. So to put 20% down to avoid PMI, you're going to be putting down 
$90,000. $90,000 to get to that $9,000. I'm going somewhere with this. My $118,000 invested in this car business is going to make $10,000. So that's like... $28,000 more than $90,000 and it makes the same money without the massive investment or leverage so I don't think that I'm going to do real estate um, the more and more I think about it because it, it just takes so much money to make decent money in real estate in my opinion you know so I'm probably not going to do real estate I'm probably going to stick with this car business because I can go out and buy assets way cheaper and get similar or in some cases even more money and also because I have so many assets my portfolio is extremely diversified like I'm just sitting here like, man, like this $250,000 investment would take until 2023 to get to um, about four or 500,000 a month. So 2021, 2022, 23, three years. Now, this is where I am going to use leverage in this business um, September October and this is why you got to start build business credit if I had built business credit I would probably be sitting on two million dollars worth of business credit right now my bad but with the business credit I should be able to get five hundred thousand to a million dollars of business credit leveraging the Wells Fargo credit relationship um, October. So in October, we're going to see a really big bump in this business. October, November, whenever I, I whenever that card converts. Because I'm going to bank and then I'm going to um, go ahead, get that leverage and that's going to boost me to 60, 70 cars by December. And 60, 70 cars is going to put me at 100K a month in revenue. Now, I get a lot of questions like, you know, I went ahead and for some reason, I call it COVID, I don't know. It's taking Wells Fargo forever. I'm going to call them today. But I went ahead and got another um, business credit card for Mac Daddy Auto. And that business credit card, let me tell you about this because uh, the first year, I'm going to be managing it. But the second year, I'm gonna hire people. The first year, once I scale it up to 200K a month, I'm gonna hire two people to actually go out and buy the cars. Because once again, once I go ahead and get auction access, I get my dealer's license, my employees can go to the auction and buy cars. And this is where the credit comes in. So we'll have a credit line at that auction house so I don't have to worry about giving them money or their hands or you know essentially I don't know if when they use it and they buy a car because the cars will come in so and also I can issue my employees credit cards so like the car needs an oil change the car needs a repair you have a have a corporate credit card to handle those things and I don't have to be there or write checks or do stuff like that. So the first year is building the business, getting it to six figures. That's what, that's what I hope to do December, January. That's first phase. Second phase is to hire people to do the check-ins, to manage the cars, to actually go to auction with a directive, buy cars, bring the cars in, go ahead and set up all of these relationships where they can get an oil change, get whatever need fixed, get the car inspected, get the GPS tracker on it. And I want this whole system to be automated where I don't have to do nothing. 
I don't have to do nothing because um, I did some research. Do you know Aaron's Rent to Own was started in 1955? 1955, man. So uh, I see this as my retirement business. But this is something else because uh, I worked up some numbers and I can scale it up to 600000 per month and then pull a lot of money out of the business. I mean, a lot of money for myself and also leave money in the business so it keeps replenishing and recycling. And when we get to the buy here, pay here, because essentially I'm going to work on the rental business and when I get my dealer's license, I'm going to buy one car and I'm going to sell it and then I'm going to take that money, put it into another car and then sell it. And that's what I'm going to do once I get my license. And I, I'm like, right now, um, I, I feel that this will be August because I got to wait on people. Uh, they haven't even cashed my check from my office. So I know a lot of stuff isn't done. So, you know, uh, June is still, you know, we're going to do some more testing. Um, with June, I'm going to see which works out better because if I buy better cars and rent them out for higher prices, I need less cars to achieve my objective. If I was doing um, cheap cars, the issue with the cheap cars is you need more cheap cars and the cheap car is still going to have the um, insurance issue in terms of you know insurance per car it's still going to have that issue so I can have a car that I pay six thousand seven thousand for and I could have a car that I could pay fifteen thousand for and I could put the I can make twice the money with the fifteen thousand dollar car literally twice the money and also with the fifteen thousand dollar car in terms of future resell these cars will not be as beat up as like one of the big problems that i saw was when you get to a five thousand dollar car a lot of these cars have 190 to 250 thousand miles on them and then I rent them out, and let's say these cars get another 20, 30,000 miles on them during the rental period. Uh, I'm gonna have to sell this car for three to four thousand dollars, you know. Whereas if I get a car that um, doesn't have 200,000, let's say I get a car that has 130 to 150, and then when I bring it to sell, it has like 170. That's a lot easier to sell than 200. 250 uh 300 i have seen some cars with 250 270 thousand miles on them and um you know i gotta look for the future so i'm buying these cars with the expectation to sell these cars in the future so i gotta be really careful with the mileage and also in terms of you know we will see, we will see, because if the BMW and the Range Rovers and the Porsche perform this month, I'm not gonna sell them because uh, those four cars, if they rent out the way that I want them to rent, they make 6,300 bucks a month. So more than likely what I'm gonna do is buy six to eight more cars kind of like that because um, everyone is putting crap on hire car. That's the goal, to put the cheapest car on there as possible. So I don't have a lot of competition with half halfway decent, nice cars. So that's the plan because I go ahead and set this up and the first year I do everything because, uh, you know, I'm building it up. But I get myself two employees to handle the buying, the renting, the intake of the car. That's what we're going to call it, intake, all change. 
I just sit back home and collect money. So at that point, it becomes passive. <laughs> well, 95% passive. Uh, I will have to interview people and hire people for the business as it goes on. And then I'm thinking in year three, go ahead and not rent a, a, a spot, but buy a spot. Buy a place that has garages and a big parking lot. And because to buy it, it's going to be cheaper than renting it. It's going to be much cheaper than renting it. So buy a spot. And at that point, year three, the revenue should be close to a million. So I'll have plenty of cash to buy a spot, set a spot up, and then create this business. And I, I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm just like tingling with anticipation because I've been watching all of these dividend stock portfolios. And here's the thing, if you started with one car, one car, just a normal car, and then next year took all that money and bought another car, and you got yourself up to 10 cars in 10 years, you would be making eight to $10,000 a month revenue. And you, or you could, you know, which would be like six figures, spendable cash coming into your pocket, or you can go ahead and put a thousand dollars a month into a uh, dividend stock in 10 years, be getting a thousand dollars a month in dividends. You can do what you want to do. Like, to me, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But once again, this is one of the reasons I'm doing Savage Finance to expose people to different ideals and different concepts. Because, like I said, I've been toying with real estate, but real estate, it just takes so much money. And from a philosophical standpoint, I am not a big fan of leverage. And that's what it's going to take for you to be successful in the real estate game. You're going to have to have a lot of leverage. And right now, um, you know, real estate is insane. You know, real estate is very hot. So, you know, leverage isn't as dangerous, I would say, as it would be during a down cycle. But I look at, I could take my $250,000 and invested in this business. And let's say I didn't go ahead and get the business credit, which I anticipate getting, like I said, October, November. In year three, I'll still be at like 500,000 because the business credit will move me 14, 15 months ahead. That's what the business credit will do. So without the business credit, I will still be at 500,000 per month, year three. With business credit, I'll be over a million a month. A million a month. And, you know, this is reminiscence of me building a million dollar business here on YouTube. And now I'm building a million dollar business off YouTube in three years. In three years, this will be a 12 to $14 million a year business. In three years. And once again, I'm doing this, I'm exposing this because there are so many people who are stuck on dividend stock portfolio, trucking. Like to me, this business compared to trucking I buy the right cars. So I'm not going to have a lot of repair expenses. You cannot say that about trucking. I have watched the trucking videos. You can instantly have a ten, fifteen thousand dollar repair bill on the truck, and you got to get that truck fixed to keep making money. I'm not going to have no ten and fifteen thousand dollar repair bills with these cars. I'm not. So, you know, you know, someone's like, you can make more money with trucking. I, I, I beg to differ. Uh, if I bought let's say took that 250 and bought five trucks and I bought five trucks and I think Erica broke it down so essentially you make fifty thousand dollars a year per truck if everything goes according to plan so that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars 
a year. That's after paying drivers, paying for truck repairs, two fifty a year. This business will be at a hundred k a month, December January. Let me say that again. I could have taken this two fifty and bought five trucks, fifty thousand, or maybe even like you know maybe ten trucks at twenty five thousand a piece. Got ten drivers. And let's say um, each truck did fifty thousand, so that's five hundred thousand dollars a year after paying expenses. So I build this car business for that same two fifty, and I'll be at a hundred k a month. And it's way easier to manage. <laughs> this is way easier to manage. Because I have watched enough trucking videos that people don't want to become owner operators because they don't want to deal with drivers. They don't want to deal with drivers. So th this is much easier to manage than trucking and way more profitable. Way more profitable. And, you know, um, I see I could do this. I am 54. I do this for 35 years. That's going to make me 89, 90 years old, you know? So that's the game plan. I'm going to do a video like this the beginning of next month. Once I go ahead and buy some more vehicles, put them on the platforms, update. Because essentially what happens is with the platform, it changes. Like it doesn't do my 30 day total. I, I got to get in there and play around with it some more. So it just switched to what I made for June. And I made $5,500 for May, and I've already made $450 for June. So that kind of absolves the repairs. So I haven't spent any more money. So that kind of put me back at the 118. And then, I'm like I said, I'm probably going to spend another 100 grand on vehicles, maybe this month, because, you know, this is the testing month because, um, I want to really get rocking and rolling by July and August, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I kind of have a feeling which way I'm going to go. So it's going to be with the more expensive vehicles. It's going to be with the nicer vehicles because they, they, they move quick. I don't have to worry about, um, them. Like I said, that Porsche, I made more money with higher car with that Porsche than I did on um, Turo. Guy has had it going on three weeks. And um, yeah, so we will be talking about this, more business talk, more stuff. I'm gonna just leave certain topics alone. But yeah, that's what's going on today. First day of the month. So that's all I got for you animals. I will go ahead and probably talk about what's coming with the training because I'm getting ready to reset the training and dive into the finer details. So be on the lookout for that. So with that, I will talk to you guys later.